Hello there. This is Kaylin Buckley. Uh, my wife Megan and I and our little boy Brooks go to Common Thread Church. And I wanted to talk a little bit today about everything that um, is going on with the, the racial injustices in our country and maybe how we should respond as the church or maybe how I've responded as uh, a white guy in Arkansas. And um, just to give you a little bit um, of an idea of what my perspective is, I was raised in pretty much the Southeastern Conference. I've lived all over the South. I've lived in Louisiana, Arkansas, Tennessee, and Georgia. And I lived in pretty rural, white, you know, gun-toting, red-blooded American counties and cities. And um, as you can imagine, I experienced a lot of um, anger, a lot of fear of um, the unknown, um, and honestly, just a lot of um, hate towards black people. And while I was growing up in these cities, I also was attending a church every Sunday and every Wednesday. And I was hearing a lot about Jesus Christ but and the things that he did, but none of them seemed to line up with the things that I was seeing in school and at home and, you know, from our neighbors and so I, I was always conflicted. I always had this tension inside of me and this conflict because I'm being told by all of these adults to love your neighbor, no matter who they are. But then I'm, I wasn't seeing a lot of adults actually love their neighbors. And I definitely wasn't seeing them love their black neighbors. Um, and so... Here I am now, almost 30 years old, still living in the South, and I'm trying to still understand. I'm still trying to, um, you know, recognize that I do have privilege as a white male living in the South. There's so many things that I can do without fear that a 30-year-old black man who could be just like me in every other way could not do. Um, and that breaks my heart. Um, but I, th I think the thing that breaks my heart even worse is how a lot of people have responded to these injustices over the last few years, and especially recently, um, especially Christians. And, you know, the church is doing a lot of good right now, and I don't ever want to knock anyone in the church. But I've just seen so many Christian voices who um, are kind of forgetting about Jesus right now, it seems like they're kind of, um, they're either doubling down on their hate or they're, um, finding new verses that they can pull out of context and use to, to, um, I guess make their, their beliefs seem reasonable. And, um, what I want to say to that is, um, the kingdom of God will, can and will be here on earth as it is in heaven. Um, one of the things that I'm hearing a lot of Christian voices say is, they say, well, you know, this is the kingdom of earth. This is ruled by Satan. And the kingdom of God is perfect in heaven. And it will be one day when we get there. But until then, not much is probably going to change here on earth. Um, and when you have that mentality, it's almost like you're saying, well, let's just, let's just forget about any hope here on earth. Let's just hang tight and, and we'll make it to heaven one day and everything will be perfect there. And I agree. Yes, I believe in heaven and I know it's going to be beautiful and there's going to be no racism or no hate. Um, but it's also going to look a lot different than most churches look today. It's going to be very diverse from what we're told in the Bible. It's going to be full of people from all different nations and tribes. And um, I believe that we can reflect that here on earth, not only through the church, but even outside of the church, even just in our communities. Um, and so I believe it's important that we, not only as just as citizens of our country, but also as 
as Christians, um, work to um, make change and to um, show others Christ by what we do and how we love them. Um, you know, Jesus told his disciples that people will know that you follow me because of the way that you love each other. And right now, I'm afraid that a lot of people don't see Jesus in us because they don't see how we're loving our neighbors and loving each other. And so, um, even though that seems like a gloomy thing to focus on, what I want to say is there is hope. There's, there's something very joyful and good about this message of the gospel. And that hope is that not only will heaven be perfect and everything will be made whole and there will be no racism and no hate and no murder, um, we can also have peace and joy and hope here on earth. And we can have a place where people aren't held back because of the color of their skin or, you know, people can go live a normal life like I can without fear and without judgment based off of something that they have no control over. And so I know that we as Common Thread Church, um, but we as the as the big C church um, all have the same goal in mind. We just want to love others. And we want to love God. But right now it's very, very important that we show people what we really mean and why we love them. And so I don't have all the answers. I don't know exactly what that looks like, um, but I'm excited to get to go into this time with you guys and, and go into the next couple generations of, of people and see what they're going to do and, and see that my kids could live in a totally different world. Um, and that my kids won't ever hear me say the things that I heard from a lot of adults in my life. And, um, maybe they'll see a different world where they can, um, actually have some kingdom here, but we also want to have the king. We don't want to have kingdom without the king. So that's just something also to remember. I know that was a lot. If it's, I'm at seven and a half minutes. So if you guys have made it this far into my weird little ramble, <laughs> then thanks for listening. But um, I love you guys and I love our church and I'm so thankful and I have, I have a lot of hope for the future. Take care.